Okay, for piecewise functions, you don't have to have just two expressions. You could have as many as you want. So in this case, we have uh, three of them. So again, we have conditions that are written for each one. X is less than negative three. It's always gonna be zero no matter what. If your X value is in between, so larger than negative three and less than zero, then you're gonna be using negative X. And if your X values are greater than or equal to zero, then you're gonna use X squared minus one. Here's four different parts that we're gonna do for this one. The first one asks us to find f of zero. So the first thing you have to figure out is which one of these conditional statements is going to include the zero. The only one that's included on this, this is not, this one's not, this one is here because we do have the equal sign uh, included there with the zero. So that means that for f of zero, I wanna put zero into this expression right here, x squared minus one. So that's gonna be zero squared minus one. The answer is gonna be negative one. So when x is zero, you get negative one is an answer. Next, let's do f of negative one. Okay, negative one is not less than negative three, does not belong to that one. However, it does belong to this. The negative one it is larger than negative three, but it's also less than zero at the same time. So we're gonna use the second equation. Now you gotta be careful with this. The formula has a negative in it, and we're putting a negative one in for x, so the two negatives are gonna cancel and that's gonna give you positive one. So when x is negative one, you put it in here and you get positive one as a result. Okay, now I have square root of 10 over two. If you put that into a calculator, you get 1.58. However, you wouldn't even need to do that because what we know about this is that's a positive number on top and there's a positive number on the bottom. So the only one that allows positive numbers is going to be the third one so we're gonna put square root of 10 over two in place of x here. Or we could have known that we got 1.58, that's greater than zero as well, would we'll still tell you to use the third equation. So in this case, we're gonna put square root of 10 over two, we're putting it into, into here, and then we subtract one. So we square the top and bottom, square this, we'll get rid of the radical, we get 10, the bottom one, two squared is gonna give you four. You're gonna do minus one there. That's the same thing as 10 over four reduces to five halves minus one. One can be written as two over two, so five halves minus one half, that's gonna give you three halves. So three halves would be the answer for part C. For D, we have negative square root of 11. We gotta do a calculator on this one, and if we do that, you're gonna get negative 3.32. Okay, that right there would fit the first equation, negative 3.32 is, it's less than negative three, so you would not use that. Now there's nothing to actually plug the square root into, so there's nothing to plug it into. That means that we're just gonna automatically put zero down for the answer, that's what it means. So there's, there's nothing to put in, it just means that if you get a value that's less than negative three, automatically the y value is gonna be zero. Okay, let's do the, the graph on this one. I've already created three different tables for this one. So the first one is really written this way, y equals zero when x is less than negative three. Remember that you always wanna start with using whatever number is in the conditional statement. So I'm gonna start by putting in negative three to that one. Now this says that if I put negative three, it doesn't even matter what these two points are, automatically I get zeros for both. So I get negative three, zero, and negative four, zero. That's gonna be the first points that are on there. So the question is, well, what's that gonna look like when I draw my graph? Well, the negative three was not originally included, so I'm gonna to go to negative three, I'm gonna put in a open circle at that point, because again, negative three originally was not included. The next point I have is negative four, zero, it's here. So what I get is I get a line that goes this direction, that goes down towards the left. So that's what I get for the first one. Well now I'm gonna do negative x. Now the negative x is only between negative three and zero, so I'm just gonna see a small piece of that line. Again, I'm using whatever two endpoints I have. It doesn't matter if it's included or not, I'm gonna include both of those. So negative three in here, I get negative and I get negative three. Again, be careful with that double negative, that's gonna give you a three here, so you get negative three and three. Next, I'm gonna use the zero. Negative zero is gonna give zero, so now I have zero, zero as my other point. So 
the 3, it's going to be included. Okay, so I have negative 3 and positive 3 means that that's going to be a closed circle. And then 0, 0 is going to have to be an open circle. So right here, the, that's going to look like this one. I have a line going down here. It's connecting negative 3, 3, and also 0, 0. So that's what the second one will look like. Then I'm going to do x squared minus 1. X is greater than or equal to 0, so I picked 0 as the first starting one, and then I have these other points here. Well, let's put that in. I have 0 squared minus 1, and that's going to give us negative 1, so I have 0, negative 1, and then I have 1 squared minus 1 is going to be 0, so 1, 0, and then I have 2 squared minus 1 will be 3, and so then I get 2, 3. So I have these three points. Again, if you have a square, it's always good to do at least three points on it, so that way you can get the, the correct curve on that one. Let's plot them. 0, negative 1 uh, is here. That's going to be a closed circle. Then I have 1, 0. That's this one. And then I have 2, 3, which is here. So I get this curve line like that. And that would be all three pieces. Here's the first one that goes with the zero, going that direction. This line is between negative three and zero. That's a slanted point there. And then I have this one, which is going to be the, uh, the quadratic there. And that's why, again, it's, it's good to do three points. If you didn't do three points, you might accidentally think it's a line and you might draw it out like that. And that would be incorrect because a square means it's going to have a, a curved shape uh, similar to this one. So this is going to be your completed graph for piecewise functions.